On today's episode, I had the opportunity to speak with Kingsley Moyo, who is a pastor and a Christian counselor. We do a little bit of a Q&A just to get into his world and better understand how he does the things that he does, the tactics that he uses. And we also discuss when and how to know that it's the right time to speak to a counselor. We also talk about self-care, healthy self-care, and what that looks like, as well as the difference between speaking with a friend about our struggles versus speaking with a trained counselor. I am sharing about my personal experiences with counseling and why it has helped me, and Kingsley touches on one of the biggest issues that he sees most consistently, which is a lack of forgiveness. We touch on for trauma, resentment, and how going to counseling can impact our lives for the better. Let's dive in. Welcome to All The Things, the unscripted podcast where we talk to intriguing people from a variety of cultures, backgrounds, and career paths and deconstruct who they are and why they think the way that they do. We dig deep and ask unexpected questions to learn about all the things from faith and current events to relationships and mental health. We want to satisfy your craving for knowledge, true connection, and real conversation. This is Lenya Heitzig and Lindsay Maestas. Hey everyone, welcome back to the All The Things podcast. This is Lindsay, and today I am here with Kingsley Moyo, um, a Christian counselor and also a man that I had the opportunity to speak with on his podcast, Relationship Factor. So thank you so much, Kingsley, for coming on. It's nice to have you on this end of things. Hey, Lindsay, it's good to connect with you. Uh, I had a good time uh, connecting with the last time recording at Relationship Factor. Thank you for having me. Of course. So you guys, Lenya is unable to be on the episode today, but we're really excited because she and I both talk a lot about counseling, Christian counseling, and Kingsley has a lot of experience as a Christian counselor. And so we're basically just going to dive in and ask some questions from his perspective and also have him share why counseling is important, how it can benefit you and help you, and when to know when it's the time to get counseling. So Kingsley, can you start a little bit just by telling us about yourself, your family, your background, and how you got into counseling? Well, uh, that might be a long journey, but anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll take the short, the short part of it. Okay. I got into counseling um, by seeing a, a need in the community. I was pastoring a congregation, and more often I tried to reach out a lot into the community. And as I went into the community, many of the conversations I would have would relate around broken relationships with parents, broken relationships between spouses, broken relationship with friends. And I would observe that all these broken relationships uh, affected people, how they functioned at work, how they functioned in their health generally. And this was also true in the church and more so in the church. The frustration was, I'm a Christian. I'm struggling with all of these things. How can I pull through from these things? Mm. And so my training began from there. I went to school from that and I started putting those things into practice in the community and then further continue on to grad studies, taking counseling. And I've enjoyed it. More so I've enjoyed seeing couples get to that aha moment where they realize, hey, we are not the problem. We can team up against the problem, which is not us. Mm-hmm. That aha moment when they walk away and I meet them the next time, they're like, hey, pastor, hey, Kingsley, um, we made it. Thank you so much. That's wow. really That's awesome. the short journey of the passion and the love for counseling that I've had and how it grew up. I really love that. And I feel like the opportunity to see into people's lives has to be a very unique one. What are, what are the emotions that you feel when you get into a room with someone and you have these conversations and either it's really heated or you're seeing growth? Do you take that home with you or is that something you've learned or have been able to separate yourself from? The typical default position is to take that with you because sometimes when I'm sitting in that room as a counselor, 
I'm still human being. Mm. So the typical default uh, uh, is to take that stuff at home and for it to weigh down on me. But because you get the training and the number one thing is self-awareness and training, you got to understand what triggers you. And believe it or not, sometimes when couples bring certain issues into the counseling session, there are things that resonate with me because I've went through those things. Yeah. And I have some scars from those things. So my emotional involvement tends to be a little bit more. But because now I'm aware of that, I can easily, well, eh, easily, Lindsay, maybe, <laughs> I, I work at... <laughs> by the grace of God, right? At, there you go, by the grace of God, as God leads. So I, 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 by the grace of God, I try to work it in such a way that when I get to my door, all those things stay behind. And it's a little bit different now with the COVID situation mm -hmm. because my office is in my basement now. Yeah. And I have my little nice office, everything set up. So when I go down in the basement, um, I don't have a door to live in because before I used to leave it at the entryway. Yes. <laughs> so I have to be, there's more intentionality. So yeah, there is emotions involved. Believe it or not, there is fear. Um, there is pain. Um, um, that I go through with the, the, with the individuals, I tend to call my therapy session, counseling sessions as journeying with the couple or the individual. Because really for me to be able to pour into their lives that God has given me is for me to understand their story. Good. And their story is worth it. Mm -hmm. And they are the experts in their story. So I need to understand it and then walk in that story and begin to say, hey, you know what? Maybe that path is not it. Why don't we turn left? Why don't we turn right? And because I do that, I, I get invested in that. So yeah, a whole ton of emotions and you gotta be intentional about it. Yeah. It's not easy, but it can be done. Yeah. So in our generation, I feel as if some people might be listening to this conversation and thinking counseling is for people whose house is on fire. And I always say this, but it's not for the people who don't have any flames going. But for me, in my experience, I found that we all have deep rooted stuff going on, right? We all have a history. We all have a variety of experiences. We're all coming together with different people in different relationships and trying to build some normalcy there and create solid bonds. And sometimes our, our history or our past can get in the way of that. Right. And so these emotions that you're feeling as you walk out are emotions that are given to you basically by these other people as they share their story and you listen. And so I think although it's become much more normalized in our generation now, many people do still believe that it's only necessary to see a counselor if you're mentally ill or going some, through something traumatic. And so I would just ask maybe kind of backtracking what point in life, at what point in life should someone pursue time to speak with a, a counselor or a pastor or a therapist? It's interesting you, you, you mentioned that in our generation, it has been normalized. I, I interact with people from all over the globe. And I find that not everybody has normalized getting help. Yeah. And when I say normalized getting help, I'm talking about a professional counselor or therapist. Right. But the reality is everyone is getting help because believe it or not, Lindsay, before you went to a therapist, you spoke to somebody, yeah. you had conversation with somebody. And now you get to a point whereby you need to go see a professional. People tend to have hesitation. Like you mentioned, mental illness. Uh, people tend to think that if you're mentally ill, you're crazy. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> depression is a mental illness. Anxiety is a mental illness. Um, and these are not bad things. Mm -hmm. It just means that your resources and the stressors are not at equilibrium. Your stresses are, are much more than uh, your resources. And because of that, things are stressing you out and you're off and you're off balance. So when do you really need to go see a counselor at what point in time in your life? Well, I think of um, self uh, as a as a I think of counseling as self care. Um, it's really taking care of yourself. So as an individual, I would say self care. You don't have to 
wait up until the house is burning. Mm -hmm. We fireproof the houses. We put smoke detectors in the houses. We uh, we use certain coating and paint for so that the house doesn't burn faster. Yeah. We we have sprinklers in buildings and all this stuff. We do all these protective mechanisms nowadays because of technology. The uh, the number of bells and whistles that you have in a car that are protective, a ton of them. There's a ton of them. So first, think of it as self-care. You don't have to wait until there's a problem. And sometimes people tend to think of self-care. They come up with those wrong ideas of self-care. You hear somebody say, oh, I'm going to have a donut. It's self-care. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's really that, <sighs> that oily, sugary thing, self-care. Um... I don't know. Yeah, there's a self-care. there's definitely a misconception of yeah. self-care. And I've even seen, you know, authors write a little bit about this and just saying sometimes self-care does not look like face masks and donuts and binge watching Netflix. Mm, yeah. Real self-care looks like talking to someone um, being in community, sitting in prayer and in your Bible, going on a right. run, exercising, like getting out in creation, doing the things that actually feed your soul. You, you're dead on because sometimes we think of self-care as isolating, being on your own, and then you feed your pleasures. And some of the pleasures that we sometimes do, um, contrary to biblical uh, counsel, um, they're not healthy. It's not a holistic approach. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to church is self-care. Paul says, don't forsake the gathering of brethren. Amen. Um, as iron sharpeneth iron. So you get into Bible studies. That is actually self-care. Yeah. Um, going to therapy to talk to somebody. That is actually self-care. Mm-hmm. And some people in the pastoral staff, there's somebody who is dedicated to counseling. You don't have to go to them when there's a problem. You can just book some time and say, hey, pastor, I just want to come and talk with you. Yeah. Um, bounce off ideas, just chat and just just engage somebody. And really the key indicator that you need to speak to somebody is when there's a loss of interest in activities mm. and it's persistent for about a week. That's, that, that's a point where you need to start thinking, OK, why am I losing interest? Is anxiety? Is it depression? Um, um, is it spiritual apathy? And sometimes we tend to confuse a uh, spiritual apathy with depression. And the reality is sometimes it's a matter of the heart. God needs to speak to our heart. And if we're involved in things that are not of God, we can be pulled away and lose interest. And so you have to watch for all of those things. So as an individual, don't wait for it, for things to go wrong. Think of it as self-care. When you buy a car, you don't drive it for 10 years and not take it to a mechanic. You take it for an oil change. You touch it up and fix it here and do all these things. Change brakes. Think of your body that what more a body that was created by God, fearful and wonderfully made. Mm, That's so good. So good. I I feel like I want to touch back on the normalization because as you speak, I've, I've spoken to a counselor. I talk about this. I've spoken to a counselor many times. And since COVID happened, I actually haven't as much because it was via Zoom and it just didn't feel fully the same for me. But (laughs) I've started realizing like for me, a lot of it is not when I'm losing control, right? It's not when my husband and I are in a big argument. Most of the time, it's just like, I just want to talk to someone who can pour back in. And I have a large Uh community. I have a lot of people. I love friendship. I love people. And so I do have a lot of friends who are close to me, but sometimes I think it's different and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think it's different to speak with someone who is outside of your sphere, who doesn't have an emotional connection to the other people in your life, including your spouse or your children or your parents, because sometimes it can trigger them, right? If they've only heard bad things from me about a family right. member, then they're going to respond in a way that is like, oh, how how could they? Or I'm so sorry, you know, rather than, okay, let's look at this from an outsider's perspective, and and see what did you do that was unkind was there anything that you did how did you respond or kind of just processing through and so would you agree with that would right. you say there's a difference in talking to a friend versus talking to a counselor there's absolutely a huge a huge difference 
And right off the bat, I can say that training is different. Yeah. The training makes a big difference. And I might as well put myself on the line here. I'm a pastor. Uh, There's a certain scope of practice that every individual functions in. Mm -hmm. Pastors do biblical counseling if they've been trained. Um, You know, there's a difference between counseling and therapy. Counseling tends to deal with... uh, I'm journeying with you, uh, giving feedback and, and, and short term or therapy tends to be more diagnostic and walking with you long term. Um, so there's a huge difference uh, in talking to a friend and somebody who is trained. So the training is number one. Number two, confidentiality. One of the reasons why people struggle alone and don't want to even talk to their friends and they haven't normalized going to a counselor is because of confidentiality. Mm. People gossip. Mm-hmm. People talk about your business. They plaster it all out there. And believe it or not, when you go for counseling, you have to be vulnerable enough. Without being vulnerable enough, you won't necessarily grow in the in the therapy essential counseling sessions. So confidentiality is key on that. Um, some people have friends that can keep confidence. That's good. Um, and some people don't. So uh, that's that's crucial. Um, and sometimes uh, friends, well-meaning as they may be, mm-hmm. they tell you what you want to know, what you want to know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes friends tell you what to do. Therapists or counseling help you figure it out and get it done. So okay. when you come into my and we come into my office or if you call me or video chat or whatever the case may be, I one of my main questions that I need to ask you is what is the problem? Um, if there's no problem, that's fine. We journey. I begin to converse with you and we find those areas. Just recently, I had a young man who reached out to me online and he didn't really have a specific problem that he wanted to reach to me about. He said, hey. You say, hey, let's connect. And I often tend to offer these counseling sessions for free. Say, hey, if somebody listens to a podcast, reach out to me in a week, I'll do that. So he reached out. He didn't have anything specific or any problem. But as we journeyed along, we discovered that, hey, there were certain things in his life that needed to be attended to. Mm -hmm. So walked through that. He set goals. The next time we met, he accomplished those goals or some of them he had plans. So, uh... Therapy will help you figure out those things. Friends, yes, they are well-meaning. They have their place. Talk to them. But therapy takes it to the next level. Yeah. So that's crucial. And I I think as we speak, I can imagine maybe the mind of people going to the maybe the stigma against counseling or therapy where they envision the cliche of like laying down on a couch and Doing, I mean, I've, I've heard of some very interesting therapy sessions where they tell people like to scream as loud as they can and, and they dive into like hypnosis and stuff. And so yeah. obviously that's not what we're talking about yeah. here, but what does a typical day, say you were in your office and someone were to come in, what does that look like? I know that it can be different for every person, but for people my age who may have never been to a counselor or older generations who've only heard really bizarre things about counseling, can you normalize it for us a little bit? Sure. Really, when you think of think of a counseling as um, self-talk, but that one that you really say out loud. Okay. So really, when you go to a therapy session, you don't have to know what to say. All you got to do is show up. It okay. is a responsibility of the therapist to get you to converse and to talk and to ask you the right questions. So there's training for that. Um, and, and, and so when you go to a therapy session, you book your time, you come in, in my case, I get people that just show up in my office, like, Hey, pastor, uh, uh, um, I want to chat. And I start asking them questions, what's going on. Uh, and then I pay attention to the things that are stresses in their life. So when you're thinking of going to a therapy session or counseling session, don't start processing on what you should say on what you should do. Yeah. The number one thing you really need to think about is to just show up, just just go there. And sometimes people find it difficult to do one-on-one session, understandably so because of personalities. You can try group therapy. If I'm not mistaken, when we had a conversation with you, you said sometimes you do a group session with women. Oh, yeah. Like you. Yeah. Yeah. We do like community group style where we not not with counselors, but community group where we 
go through studies and then talk about really honest and vulnerable things to just to make one another feel not so alone. There you go. So that's a form of type of therapy. When you when you have no clue or don't know what to expect or you're feeling hesitant, just try that first. Just go to group therapy. Find a group um, where you can go to. Um, there are some Bible studies where it's just purely studying the Bible or maybe a book or a topic. There are some group uh, Bible studies where people journey through sharing testimonies, stories of what's happening in your life and what's going on. And that could be a place that can teach you to kind of uh, listen to how people talk and how to understand what people's stories are like. So try that. Show up. Don't think about whether I need to, what I need to know. Just, just show up. And this is crucial because if you do go, you will learn more about yourself. Yes. Therapy can help you achieve your goals. Therapy can help you have more fulfilling relationships. And that's really one thing that I'm really passionate about. Uh, when your relationships are broken, everything else around you is broken. Think about it. God is a relational being. Yes. From eternity, God was just hanging out with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They were coexisting in an eternal relationship. And God wanted to pass that down to Adam and Eve. He created Adam and Eve. And guess what? Satan knew that if I let Adam and Eve thrive, it means that all the generations that are going to follow after them are going to learn and understand what God's love looks like. Mm. So he began to attack. He attacked the family the very core of what identity and relationships are. So uh, when you go to therapy, you will learn fulfilling relationships. I might as well qualify this and say, Lindsay, there's different kinds of counselors in therapy. Right. There's um, Christian counselors and there's counselors that are not Christian. So depending on what you're looking for, you might want to sift through and figure out what do I need? Um, I, I'm a trained counselor, so I will tend to speak to uh, Christians, even somebody who's unchurched or doesn't go to church. I am trained as well to speak to them in their language so that we can understand. So depending on who you are, where you are in life, you might want to find out on that. So really show up. If you feel like showing up is a little bit difficult, uh, try group therapy. Typical session will last you any about 50 minutes. And 50 minutes, you know, Lindsay, it just flies by just yes. like that. Well, and Google is a great resource because I do get a lot of questions on my personal like social media accounts of where, who do you go to? Who do you talk to? You know, and mm -hmm. I'll share um, for us in our city of Albuquerque, because we have a lot of listeners from here, formation counseling is a great resource, but you can just Google, you know, Christian counselors right. in whichever city. I mean, it really is so accessible. I'll say Kingsley, when I first went, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to expect. And I'm a talker, obviously, that's what I do. And so I was like, I think I can fill the space if I need to. But I almost felt, if I'm honest, like I was going to walk in there and maybe put on some sort of facade. Like I didn't want this person to get into the depths of me because I kind of have it all figured out and I'm a control freak and, you know, I can create solutions mm -hmm. on my own. But Proverbs 13.10 stuck out to me and it's a verse that I've just kind of consistently gone back to and it says, where there is strife, there is pride, mm -hmm. but wisdom is found in those who take advice. And I seek advice right. from older women, from men, from my husband, from people in my life. But I did feel a sense when I did finally go and share, like there was something sweet, as I had mentioned before, about someone who doesn't know your history, who doesn't know right. the workings of your life, but who can just right. see you and hear you and what you think, because then they can dissect things completely differently and help to point you to Jesus in a way that's really freeing. And, and I walked away where my pride was, <laughs> I was humbled because <laughs> I thought I had been fixing these things or, or doing these things or approaching them in the best way. My counselor confirmed that sometimes like, oh, you know what? That is a really great way to handle it. But there were also a lot of ways where she's like, you know, maybe like, let's look to maybe. scripture for this. Yeah. Let's look to tactics of healing and boundaries and in love that maybe you haven't considered. And so just coming from 
30 year old girl, you know, I started it a year ago and it's, it's been really a very healthy thing for my family. And my husband always says, whenever you come home, I can just tell <laughs> that you've been to her because you just seem to have like a weight off of your shoulders. I love what you do, Kingsley. It's I think true. it's an amazing thing. It, it, it's true when you talk about the fact that sometimes when you go there, you might be hesitant because more so when I see people that have, are going through trauma, people that are going through trauma don't like to talk about their traumatic experience because it brings back all those emotions, the pain, the fear, and the anger. Right. And somebody who might be listening and go and listening to this and going through and thinking, you know, I don't want to relieve that. I don't want to talk about that. Talking is therapeutic. Whatever is hidden in secret, it thrives and it becomes a cancer that eats you from within. And, you know, God wants to set you free from that. And sometimes when you sit on your own and you're thinking, okay, should I even talk about this? God, what should I do? God has placed different kind of people in your life. And these people are there to be able to help you. The Holy Spirit might send you somebody that you didn't expect might be coming your way. And they might be the one that might be used to set you free. So I would encourage anyone who thinks, you know what, I'm not sure about this. Try it. Try it once. And sometimes you might have tried it and you feel like you didn't connect with your your therapist. That's okay. You're not friends with everybody yeah. because everybody has a different personality. Maybe you just didn't connect with that therapist. Try somebody else. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, you might try two or three counselors until you get the one where you're like, you know what? This is a person that I can talk with. Mm -hmm. That's so good too because my actually one of my close friends, she um, was looking for someone. She was going through a lot of really deep depression and um, suicidal thoughts and just struggling a lot. And I, I was on her Kingsley. I was like, you oh. have to go talk to someone. I am here for you and I love you, but I can only be so here for you because I don't, I maybe don't have the wisdom that you need, or I don't have the ability to be on all the time, you know, and be present all the time as much as I want to be. But I just know how much it's helped me. And so she went and looked and she actually had someone um, who lived states away from her that she was able to talk to online and then someone local and the local girl just didn't fit for her. And she's like, it's a bummer because mm. I really like going and sitting in the room and like being present with her, but we just didn't click. And I kind of just told her, you have freedom to not enjoy that. Like you have freedom to not click with her. That's okay. And it's not maybe just because it's easier or you're able to go to her and be face to face doesn't mean that she's going to be the right fit for you. Maybe this person who is states right. away on the computer is going to be the right fit for you. And that's OK, too. And I think you're right in that. And I just want to affirm that that having the freedom to say that was not a good fit for me and not giving up after that, mm -hmm. because it's so easy to do. It's so easy to say, oh, that didn't work for me, but maybe it works for you. But to give chance yourself a chance. And the only reason I'm so passionate about this is because, and the reason I even wanted to speak with you today, Kingsley, is because I've seen so many lives transformed by even just the power of talking. Because right. I think sometimes we go in and we, and tell me if this is your experience, but we go in and I, my counselor says very little. And I kind of process through <laughs> my thoughts as I'm talking. I'm like, oh, wait, that actually doesn't make sense. But when it manifests in our head and the enemy gets a foothold because we're not guarding our hearts or guarding our thought or taking our thoughts captive, then we lose control. But as we speak it out loud, it's so freeing. You, you, you're absolutely right. Um, talk is therapeutic. Mm. You notice how somebody... Um, when you're going through a struggle or something that's that's weighing heavily on you and you turn to your husband and you just pour out yeah. and you just pour out it, without even, you know, sometimes as men, we tend to want to be fixers. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that, Lindsay. When my <laughs> wife tells me something, she doesn't want it fixed. She just yeah. wants me to listen. Yeah, We, we have so a rule where <laughs> Jesse will ask, okay, before you tell me, because I can tell you're about to unload. Do you want me to help? What do you need? Or do you want me just to stay <laughs> silent? <laughs> it's been a great yeah. question.
Yeah, yeah, and and that's so true. And you'll notice that sometimes when you just pour out, you feel like a weight has been lifted off you, mm-hmm. because it was like I mentioned earlier on. It's um, something that you keep in secret is like a cancer yeah. that can eat you from the inside. And believe it or not, sometimes people, some people don't need therapy, Lindsay. They need to forgive. Mm, good. They need to just forgive. Some people are carrying burdens of people that they're angry at and people that they've carried uh, um, uh, stuff for a long time. And their first first step that they really need to do is just to forgive someone. Mm -hmm. I have seen that. Sometimes I had a person who thought that they had a problem because what would end up happening is people go online. They read up all these things and they begin to diagnose themselves and they do all these things. And then they come down and sit with me. And really, one session is what really takes it just to discover that, hey, you know what? You are still angry at so and so. Mm. You have not forgiven them. Yeah. And that aha moment when you see somebody sit in the chair and begin to cry Mm. and they begin to sob and cry and as a, as, a, as a therapist, uh, that's a difference again with a friend. A friend would want to tend to console you, don't cry, or let's not talk about it. As a therapist, I'm sure you've seen this, they want you to put those emotions into words. Yeah. Being able to articulate what exactly you're going through. Hmm. And sometimes that's what somebody really needed to do. Yeah. To forgive. So what would you, and speaking of forgiveness, because I do think that's a consistent issue, whether it's it's forgiveness of abuse from the past, physical, verbal, spiritual. Um, I speak to a lot of people who have been really hurt by the church, and so then they're angry at God. <laughs> and mm-hmm. then there are people who are just bitter at their spouse or even angry that they became a parent and they don't want to say that out loud because they feel like a horrible person mm-hmm. for feeling the that shame. way. Yeah, Guilt. the shame. And and again, the enemy then gets a foothold and you live in that condemnation and there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And so with right. all of the, the past hurt that we experience as human beings and as sinners and people who experience the sin of other people, how do you process through that? Say somebody comes to sit down. Do you have any um, tactics or advice or encouragement that you typically share to somebody who's grieving something and and holding on to that unforgiveness? There's, there's a couple of things that you could you could use. Of course, I don't want to get into the technical terms of right. <laughs> the therapy world, but in simplicity, um, um, one of the main things that uh, we address in therapy is your belief system. So right now you and I are having a conversation and people are hearing one conversation happening, but there's really three conversations that are happening. There's a conversation in your head and there's a conversation in my head Mm. and that's self-talk and that self-talk is governed by a belief system. And so I'm a black, um, um, millennial, uh, Afro-Canadian living in Edmonton, Alberta, married, uh, um, with kids, um, all these things. I was born in Zimbabwe and all these things are, are, are part of my belief system and they govern my, my, my self-talk. You're the same thing too. You're a Caucasian young lady, you're married with kids, you live in the U.S., are you dealing with your politics over there? I'm dealing with my politics over here. I'm dealing yeah. with the weather here. Very These things um, become a part of our belief system. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we generate this self-talk, um, which then creates what we believe about love, what we believe about self-worth, what we believe about value, what we believe about intimacy. So when you come into a therapy session, my role is to try and help you understand what belief system you're tapping into and what belief system are dysfunctional and what do belief system are helpful. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to pull out what's in your head, put it on the table so that you can look at it and then we can sift through all of those things and figure out, okay, what is helpful? In a case, maybe let's just say a couple, 
um, a couple is is having some struggles. And by the way, if it's a reoccurring problem in the relationship for a long period, then you need to go see somebody who can help you work through that. It's, it's a couple. They're dealing with um, love, intimacy, finances, whatever, yeah. finances. They're dealing with this thing and they just can't seem to figure out what they need to do or they disagree on how to deal with finances at home. Mm -hmm. The reality is each one of them has different sets of expectations based on their belief system. And the other person maybe might not have communicated what they believe about money. Remember, again, money, um, people have different money personalities. For some, it's to spend it. For some, it's to save it. For some, it's to invest it. For some, it's to be enjoyed. So I may be that uh, my belief system as I was growing up in my family, money was status. And for you, for you, uh, for you, Lindsay, we'll just say just for play sake, you and I are married. We're not married, by the way, listeners. Um, <laughs> Lindsay is a. We live in um, totally Lindsay. different countries. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble with husband Jesse, right? I don't want to get in trouble with Jesse. Um, so so um, your belief system with money, money is to be spent. For me, money is status. So we come, we get $1,000. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, we got to hold on to this money. We got to flaunt it. We got to do all these things to show that, hey, we got the money. And you're thinking, no, let's go. <laughs> on a vacation. vacation. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right there, there's a conflict, Lindsay. Yep. Um, because your belief system and my belief system are not aligned. So what I help couples do is to put that on the table and say, oh, so this is what you believe about money. This is what you believe about money. Where can we come to the middle ground? Mm. And that aha moment of thinking, hey, I thought there was something wrong with my husband or my wife. No, no, there's nothing wrong with the person. It's their belief system that we need to understand and to work through to see what's dysfunctional and what's not dysfunctional. So that's one way to help couples. And one of the other ones is um, 100 percent ownership, um, um, owning your part in a conflict, owning your part in the house, in chores, owning your part in parenting. Um, if you're responsible for something, uh, 10%, you got to own it a hundred percent. Yeah. And some people come into therapy thinking that I was never wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Pastor, can you fix my husband? Yes. <laughs> Newsflash. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, fix people, you can't even fix a person. <laughs> yeah. I actually had someone tell me once. Um, and I get this. I mean, this is not a mockery thing because I mean, I, I think we all struggle with that pride mm -hmm. of I'm not the one, but they said, if we, if we went to marriage counseling, they would have nothing to say to me. This is what the husband said. They would have nothing to say to me. They would only have stuff to say to my <laughs> wife because I've done nothing wrong. And I said, well, I see the problem. <laughs> Because that's the problem. <laughs> but it is, I mean, that is such an essential part is to seek unity. And when we feel mm -hmm. that we are the ones in the right all the time, and we actually, Lenya and I just did an episode on um, how to fight fair, and we talked about the desire to be right. But when we right. long for that, the pride, and when we kind of cling to that pride, we really lose sight of compromise in a relationship. We lose sight of both being kingdom focused and coming together in that right. oneness. And instead we're trying to live separately and make that person a mold or an image of ourselves instead of an image of Jesus. And that's, I mean, right. in our marriage, that's been a huge revelation. My husband and I are completely different. And you mentioned finances and that is, <laughs> he's a saver. I'm a spender. <laughs> and we've really had to learn to, co yeah, to come together and say, all right, we're totally different. It doesn't mean I'm wrong because I've, I've learned balance and I've, I've, I'm growing, you know, but I'm not perfect at it. And he hoards is his terms. Like he'll hoard his money because it makes him feel safe. And he's not wrong in that, but he's learning balance and, and we're both growing by God's grace. And so it is the coming together. But I love that you bring that up Kingsley, because I do think that going into a counseling session, 
takes humility and takes a, um, a heart of flesh, like the Bible says, when we're willing to allow our grievances to affect us and to lead us to repentance rather than going in with a heart of stone. I want to affirm what you're saying uh, with the fact that going to counseling is a hard thing. And our hearts, uh, men's heart is deceitful all the time. Like if we were to sit down and say, focus on good things for the next 30 minutes, a lot of people, if not all of us would fail because we're continually thinking of evil. And that's where we need Jesus to set us free. And when we are set free by Jesus, we will begin to understand and see things in a different perspective. I love how Jesus talks. Jesus says, you know, I'm going to I'm going up there. It's good for me to go up there, because if I don't go up there, I won't be able to send you the helper. Yeah. Um, the one who's going to walk with you and journey with you. Lindsay, I'm so glad for the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. The way he comes into my heart and begins to transform clean house, my marriage, my parenting, my pastoral life, my connections in the community. I couldn't overstate what the Holy Spirit can do in anybody's life. And when we talk about counseling, I do want to make this disclaimer that we're not disqualifying that God can transform your heart, Mm. that the Holy Spirit can change your heart. Uh, We're not mentioning all of those things. But I do want to affirm that the Holy Spirit has power to use anyone and everyone who has their life surrendered to them. And sometimes it could be that you have surrendered to God and he has taken you to a therapist who can walk with you and journey with you. Amen. I want to mention out something that sometimes when we talk about therapy, one of the reasons why that got me into counseling was that there are communities, minority communities or people that don't have access to counseling therapy sessions. They cost. Yeah. They're expensive. Not they even, not only, not even, not even only minority communities. There's a lot of communities vulnerable. You, you name it, black community, Asian, Hispanic, white communities. Not everybody has access to good therapy resources. Mm. And if you're linked in and connected with a church, that's where you go in and you say, hey, I just want to talk to a pastor. Um, and that's where we can come in and support. And believe it or not, as churches, that's why we exist to minister, to serve our communities. So if you're listening to the podcast and you're thinking, you know what, I'm just struggling just to put food on the table. I don't have $120 or $80 to go and pay for somebody just to sit down and talk. Mm. I don't have that kind of money. I want to encourage you, um, connect with your local pastor. Um, In some places, I know they have student interns that on their graduate level, they tend to charge less because they're still on their journey of learning. Find teaching institutions for counseling. Go to a church. Um, I mean, if you were in my city, I'd say come and talk with me, Aww. connect with me online. Yeah. And that's what I do. Um, I connect with people online so I can pour into their lives. I might not journey with you for six months, but I will do that first aid uh, to get you out of that ditch, out of that pit, to think clearly, clearer, and then go somewhere. Yeah, well, and I would say as well, I agree with you. And I think there are a lot of, like you had mentioned, Kingsley, there are a lot of resources outside of just the Christian counselor, but also there are counselors who will work with the income. Like for ours, when I called in, they ask for your income and then they base their right. rates off of your income, which is incredible. Right. And I'm thankful that they do that. But on, I will speak to the flip side because I think there could be a tendency with those who maybe are able to afford it, but they say, ah, oh, that's a lot of money. I, And they may not say this out loud, but they would rather spend that on a night out with their friends or some sushi or, you know what I mean? Like it's, it. I think it's the priority and prioritizing when you right. do have the funds and you do have the access. Like for me, I was like, oh, that's kind of a lot. You know, if I were to go every <laughs> single week, that's, that's a chunk out of my income. However, 
I now I'm like, okay, well, I chose to go biweekly. And so that works, that fits for us. But then there's also sacrifices where I'm like, maybe I don't need that night out or maybe I don't need to buy that top or jeans. You know what I mean? It's it's replacing right. the things that you think you need that will fill you just like we talked about at the very beginning of the self-care, the things you think are best for you when really prioritizing this instead and seeing the fruit of that. So I am glad. I I agree fully with you, Kingsley, and I'm thankful that you touched on that. But I just want to say thank you so much because I, I've been like kind of tugging at this topic for a while on both my podcast, <laughs> Living Easy podcast, and then on all the things because I it is it's so crucial and so beautiful and so important and the fruit of it is very real. So um, do me a favor, Kingsley, tell our listeners where they can find you and find any resources and your podcast and all of that. Yeah, sure, Lindsay. Uh, it's good being connecting and talking about this. And yeah. I just want to add that I go for therapy too. Do you? I'm in counseling That's and cool. therapy. Yeah. yeah, I actually go. It's self care. Monthly, once a month, I go. Do you ever um, find yourself down there and sorry, go ahead. Do I ever find myself becoming the therapist in a therapy session? Well, I was going to say, do you ever find yourself critiquing their style or the way they do things yeah. and that you would do it differently? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you do. And my therapist knows that. But yeah, I yeah. tell I tell him what disclaimer. This sometimes my mind would go there. Yeah. And sometimes I walk away thinking, hey, why didn't they ask me this question? <laughs> but again, you know what? I'm going there for self care. It's just like I'm a preacher too, and when I'm listening to people preach, I, I tend to default into that scholarly mode or preacher mode where I'm like. Oh man, that text, maybe you could have done that. Mm. Um, is that true in that Bible past? As opposed to absorbing what God is saying to yeah. me and, and embrace God is using that individual to s- really speak life into me. But anyway, um, to connect with me, um, I, I have my website, relationshipfactor.org. On there, you will find some resources on how to build healthy relationships. And I have a podcast. My podcast is called Relationship Factor. And my podcast is specifically geared to millennials. Uh, it's millennials that want to, uh, each podcast is about moving you from a problem to a solution and um, uh, moving you from functional to exceptional relationships. So that's really my podcast. And um, you can find me on Instagram as well, Relationship Factor. And also, if you go on Facebook, you I have a private Facebook group where um, we talk about relationship stuff. And it's a community, really, where we, we dialogue and engage each other. And some people connect with me from there to say, hey, can I talk with you personally? And I do that sometimes. Um, so it's called Relationship Factor. So you go on Facebook, look up Relationship Factor. You will find the page. And there's also a Facebook group. So you can like the page and just click to join um, the group. Perfect. Well, that's so, so great. And I will attest to the fact that the conversation I had with Kingsley on the relationship factor, we talked about four things that affect relationships, correct? Was that the title? Right. Yeah. And it was good. And that's coming (laughs) out next Thursday, next Thursday. So check out relationship factor. Just follow me on Instagram. I, I'm so looking forward to that conversation. It w- it was lit. Yeah, it was lit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us being hip. Um, well, thanks, Kingsley. And for our, <laughs> for our listeners, um, thank you for joining us for this conversation. I just pray that you walk away encouraged to continue seeking out wisdom, whether it's from a pastor, Christian counselor, or someone in your life to, to open up and share. If that's not something that you typically do or something that's comfortable for you, I believe that Satan loses his power when our words and our secrets and our shame is in the light. And when we lift that up to Jesus, yeah, (laughs) it is. It's, (laughs) I have experienced the freedom of speaking the most shameful things out loud and realizing that there's Mm -hmm. no power over that when it's in the hands of Jesus. And when I have just said, you know what, Lord, I, it's everything. It's everything I've ever done. It's just like the woman at the well, you know, the Lord knew everything she had ever mm-hmm. done. And yet he said to go and sin no more, but to go and be a woman of God, a child of God. 
just continuing to to speak those things out loud and and to make them known because he has the power. And so if you guys um, enjoyed this episode, please take a screenshot and tag us at allthethings.podcast. And if you also have not had a chance to rate and review us on iTunes, please just take a quick second to scroll down, give us that star rating and some feedback because we love to hear what you think about the episodes. We'll talk to you guys next Tuesday. Bye. For behind the scenes videos and photos, as well as info about our upcoming guests, follow along with us on Instagram at allthethings.podcast. You can keep up with Lenya at at Lenya Heitzig and Lindsay at at Lindsay.maestas. If you'd like to listen to past episodes or learn more about us, visit the allthethingspodcast.com.